Hi everybody, Bill Ebert here. I have a short little lesson for you today called Five Programmers. And the reason I'm doing this is because I started as a programmer out of pain and suffering. I want to teach you guys a little bit about the programming business. This is basically for people who are programmers and want to know the different people that they work with or someone who's basically a manager of programmers or even it's someone who's actually purchasing programming and you're going to find that there's personality types that you need to be aware of exactly what where they fit categorically and you're going to see um, why I did this after we, after we do it so for the programmer or for the buyer of programmers or the manager of programmers uh, this will be a little entertaining story for you um, the reason that I'm actually doing this the reason that I got into the programming business is I was actually a buyer and I didn't know anything about code I didn't even know HTML I didn't even know what HTML stood for and I was buying programming I was spending probably sixty to a hundred thousand dollars a year in purchasing programming from programmers and it was painful for me I didn't know anything about code I didn't understand what they were talking about I didn't know why it took so long um, why did it cost so much and it was it was a pretty, pretty painful process for me so after enough pain and enough money being spent for programs that didn't work I went ahead and bought a book started programming and realized it wasn't that hard it was um, quite a short little learning curve for me and I learned enough about programming and I went through these stages of programming and um, hope this helps you hope this helps you as a buyer or as a programmer to see each person so I'm going to share my screen here right there so programmers by Bill Ebert like I said told you guys that um, this is for the programmer or for the buyer or for the manager there's basically five different types of programmers for this lesson and you're gonna find that there's a little there's a combination in between you know there's crisscrossing but I just basically put them into five basic categories you can see there's probably a few more but um, this is just get get you started in understanding first of all there's the newbie there's what I call the hack the pro the developer and the snob the first one is the newbie the newbie is just brand new. They don't understand the difference between a function and, a, and an object-oriented program. They don't understand anything. They don't understand terminologies. They can say HTML, but they don't know what it means. You know, they're just new. They're, they're wandering along, and they're, they're not to be trusted. Their code it doesn't work, and they have a lot of bad habits. Now, for them to be able to move into, they got to start working on those things. They need to ask a lot of questions. The learning curve is intense in the beginning. It's a whole new vocabulary. Um, for them to be able to move into the next level, which most people live and never get out of, the next level is the hack. Now, the hack is not really a true programmer yet because he's using mostly other people's code. He'll take somebody's code. You can find so much stuff. Just about anything you want, you can find online for free. So you can go out there. You can find some code. You can tweak it a little bit. You can modify it. You can, you can pile it together with other people's code. You can add a little bit here and there functionality is actually working security is the most important thing for this guy that he has to get functional and secure that if he can do that if he can use other people's code have a functional program that's not crashing and buggy and he can and he can secure the site so that it's functional even though it's not friendly code even though it's not something that a real programmer would look at and be impressed with it works it actually gets the job done and people can make a tremendous amount of money. I know people that are making six figures as a hack. Now, when these higher levels of coders look at their stuff, they'll laugh at it, they'll make fun of them, um, but the guy's making some money. He's getting the job done faster than other people. He's um, making his customers happy. The customer doesn't know any better. He doesn't know that the code looks like crap behind the scenes. The a customer only cares that it works. And if he's smart, he'll hire other people to do the design for him, and someone else will make it pretty, and he'll just make it work. So the hack, if he can get functional and secure, he can actually become a pro as far as money making. The next one is where they should probably aspire to be, and that's the pro. The programmer can really use code. He understands code. He understands the terms and the terminologies. He knows two to four different languages, so he can actually use something that's the best or the most efficient. This person, <coughs> this person understands um, geek speak. He can um, get around other geeks. He understands and he talks their language. He's extremely good at security. He understands the hacks. 
he documents his program so that when someone else uses it, he wants what they call reusable code. He actually documents the stuff so if someone else were to help him or to share or to use his stuff, it's well documented so they know what it does. And he also does what's called reusable. Reusable code, I'm not going to get into the terminologies, but it actually means that the code can be easily reused by him and other people, but it's just smart coding. Um, the other thing that he does is it's very efficient. This stuff, this stuff is, is extremely clean and efficient. He's not overusing code. He's not um, calling three different pages, four different functions. It's just not complicated and confusing. Now, the next guy is kind of a cross between a manager and a developer. This guy understands more important, he can code. He's might not, he may or may not be as good or better than the pro. That's really not important for this person. He needs to understand what code does. He does know two to four languages. You know, he understands when someone's talking to him and he's buying and he's and he's getting other people in on the team. It's really important for this guy. He's basically the super geek. He knows enough to hire other geeks and get the job done. He understands security. He's extremely flexible. And this is where this guy separates from all other coders, is he's budget directed. He cares more about the timing and the customer than he does about whether the code is beautiful or perfect or harmonious or reusable. All those things that are important to a coder and should be are not as important to him because he understands budget. He understands personalities. He understands a lot of things. As a developer manager, he needs to take care of the customer. And if the customer has a $5,000 budget, you can't keep going over. This guy, if he's a good developer, he can't keep going back to the customer and saying two more weeks, two more weeks, two more weeks, $10,000, $10,000, $10,000. He can't do that. So he has to understand that a lot of times he's actually doing things that the pro and the snob, who we're going to talk about next, won't ever do. He'll actually use hack code. He'll actually get the job done, make the customer happy, and be able to move on to the next project. So the developer understands security, understands flexibility, he's budget directed and he cares about his customers needs more than he cares about the code. Now we have the snob. Now you may hear me say some negative things about the snob but the snob is a very very valuable person in our planet. This guy is the one who's the cutting edge. I mean he's the guy who's coming up with new stuff. He's the guy that understands the standards and makes the new standards. Um, his personality is one of the most difficult to deal with but if he's part of a good team and he's part of a good development team with a good manager, um, he's actually extremely valuable. Now, the snob is hard for you to hire because he will cost you more than anybody else and it won't necessarily be a better project. It won't necessarily get the job done any sooner. And in most cases, it'll take four or five times longer than the budget requires. It will not necessarily work any faster or better, especially for the average user. You know, the snob you need desperately as one of your lead guys if you're gonna have, if your budget is unlimited and the time isn't that crucial you, the snob is your guy if you're working with a fortune 500 company or a brand one of the major brands you better have a couple snobs on your team this guy understands he can basically code blindfolded he, he sees code in his sleep the negative is he's really slow he doesn't care much about time he cares more about perfection he cares more about we, well we have to do it right you hear him say all the time well that's just not right that's just not the right way to do it. Um, the, another negative with him is his geek speak. He speaks so much in geek terminology and geek speak that even his other programmers don't understand half the stuff he's saying. And I'm not sure sometimes whether he's doing it on purpose to make himself feel better or if he just doesn't know how to communicate English language to other human beings, especially his boss and the non-programmers on his team. He speaks way too much geek speak. And a lot of the books that are written are written by this guy. And so it's really hard for the newbie to understand programming when they're reading a book by or being educated by the snob. He's also not very friendly. He's not friendly to the rest of his team. He's more he's more concerned about code than he is about other things. But the good thing is he's, he understands current standards. He understands browsers. He understands cross-browser compatibility. He understands security standards. He's, this guy is the guy to have on your team. Um, if you want perfection, he understands it. He understands more languages than everybody else. He's got four plus languages under his belt. He's usually got one or two that is really his favorite. And the guy's extremely valuable. He's he's usually he's a six figure guy income. I mean, you're gonna get someone who's really good at this job. He needs to be working for a big company that has a big budget 
because he's worth at least ninety to a hundred thousand dollars minimum. And some of these guys, especially if they're working in California, are getting pretty close to two hundred thousand dollars a year. These guys are making some really good money. So there's your five basic personality types. I hope that helps you understand the team a little bit more. Maybe I'll do some more training in the future as uh, for the actual programmer, how he get, how he can get from one stage to the other. Some more about the strengths and weaknesses of each person. But I hope that it helps you understand, especially you buyers out there, what to look for, what you need as a team member. Hope you enjoyed it. See you later. This is Bill Ebert. Have a great day.